come at the present day lobby as someone who has worked Sorry. in Washington and has actually seen the lobby firsthand. Uh, when I worked on Capitol Hill as a staffer from 1999 to 2004, um, I was able to see the lobby and its activities, and I was, out, I was actually proud, very much proud to help um, the, the two lobby groups in their endeavors. Um, and fortunately, I worked for two senators um, who were very pro-Armenian, so that wasn't an issue. Uh, but I also was not blind to the lobby's faults in certain uh, respects. So I'll discuss that as the lecture goes on. Um, because the American Committee for the Independence of Armenia may not be well known to a lot of you, I think the first part of my lecture will actually be to describe the lobby, um, how it came into being, what was it trying to accomplish, and then explain um, what its successes and failures were, and then relate those to the present day lobby. Um, and I think uh, that's the best way to compare and contrast um, these two different periods and the, the different lobbies. So let's start with the uh, early period. Um, the American Committee for the Independence of Armenia reflected, in a sense, uh, a great amount of American public sympathy for the Armenians um, that occurred immediately after World War I, um, immediately after the genocide. Uh, but it also uh, reflected the weakness of the Armenian community at the time. And the reason I say this is that the American Committee for the Independence of Armenia was really a, a American non-Armenian group, though it was organized by some Armenians behind the scenes. Uh, the driving force behind this lobby was an Armenian-American attorney named Vahan Kardashian. Um, who stood out as something quite unusual within the Armenian-American community at the time. Now let's look at the community at that time um, and to examine its socioeconomic status. Um, as Bob Myrak, who um, is very well known to many of you, um, has pointed out in his book, Torn Between Two Lands, the Armenian-American community was largely a working class community at the time, made up, made up of largely of factory workers, small shopkeepers, farmers, who had one foot in the old country and one foot in the new country. The community was highly political, but its politics were directed towards the old country. The Armenian political party served as a place of gathering news about the old country and also um, a social venue for the early immigrants. Now, the community did have a share of intellectuals, of course, but they were really geared towards old country politics and the political parties of the Armenian dispersion, not the politics of Washington, D.C. and the policy formation of Washington, D.C. So these, uh, these Armenian intellectuals were mostly associated with the Armenian language newspapers um, here in Boston, New York, or in California. Uh, one of the most interesting books of the period is the one by M. Vartan Malcolm called The Armenians of America, which was published in 1919. The book is rich in detail about the community. He shows how the community's wage earners were at or near the top of other immig immigrant groups at the time. It's a way of his boasting of how industrious the Armenians were. Uh, but what he also reveals in one of the pages of this interesting book is that the number of attorneys, active Armenian attorneys in America at the time was no more than 10. And not just in the Boston Armenian community, but nationwide. Um, so you can see how much different that is from today. And also the number of uh, college graduates was probably no more than 250, something around there. And this is out of a total Armenian American community of something like 80,000 to 100,000 people. Now with such um, small numbers, um, that may seem kind of shocking today, but that wasn't um, unusual for uh, working class immigrant communities of that time. But it just shows you how poor um, the community was at the time. And many of you I'm speaking about basically your parents or grandparents who you know, of course came here and you know were forced to work uh, long hard hours in factories. Um, so I need not sort of elaborate on this point. Um, it was also, I think, a highly traumatized community. I think much of the attention these days focuses on trauma of genocide survivors. But there's also trauma 
for the people who were actually in America at the time. Because when you imagine uh, the situation, is this was largely a bachelor community, sort of working in factories. And then when the genocide occurred, um, they were basically cut off from news about what happened to their loved ones. Um, and of course, uh, there was a great deal of uncertainty and helplessness at the time. Um, one writer in the community actually described the mood of the community as, the Armenians and the expatriation of those days were lost in deep despair. <clears throat> Excuse me. One could only see grief and sorrow in their faces, pools of tears in the depths of their eyes, and each Armenian uttered uh, a fiery throat uttered a fiery moan. So that was the mood. Now some of the community acted in a very strong way in, as a result of this of the genocide when they got news of the genocide. Uh, the community formed the Armenian National Union of America in 1917. Its purpose was threefold. First, to send volunteers to fight the Turks, collect funds for the refugees and the rebuilding of a new Armenia, and enlist the support for a pro-Armenia campaign in the United States. Now, out of a really working class community, the community really sort of uh, donated a lot of money to this effort. Something like $930,000 was actually collected in a matter of two years. When you consider that's a lot of money for very small wage earners. And it sent um, 1,000, almost 200 men as gamavors, volunteers, uh, to uh, the Levant uh, to fight the Turks uh, with the assistance of the French and the British. But it failed. It failed in one of the most important challenges facing it. One was to convince the Woodrow Wilson administration to declare war on Turkey in 1917. Because the United States entered the war in 1917, declared war on Germany and the Austria-Hungarian Empire, but not against Turkey. And this was largely because the missionary establishments in America felt that um, it would put an end to their missionary and relief work in uh, the, the Ottoman Empire. And the missionaries, particularly uh, Cleveland Dodge, who was very close to Woodrow Wilson, convinced him uh, not to do so. So within the community, though the, the National Union could mobilize the community to do certain things, like collect money, send volunteers, it showed a lack of political clout, uh, this, despite widespread American public support for the Armenians. So the National Union was therefore no match for the missionary lobby which, while sympathetic towards Armenians for obvious reasons, had its own agenda. So the National Union um, failed in its uh, first political endeavor. The National Union also became bogged down in internal Armenian politics. Uh, the consensus, the, the Union was formed as a consensus, in, in fact various Armenian political parties uh, were formed around the Union. But it, it, it uh, broke down over the question of how they should view the, the new Armenian Republic that was born in uh, May of 1918. Um, the, the Republic, um, as many of you know, was, was dominated by the ARF or the Dashtak Sutun Party. Um, and they, they said that uh, their efforts were a heroic effort in the face of uh, widespread chaos. And they owe their dominant position there to their widespread popular support. The non-ARF elements within the Armenian American community said the ARF was acting on political adventurism and that the new Armenian state should not be in the Caucasus where it was first formed, but in uh, Western Armenia or Turkish Armenia where uh, the refugees uh, from the genocide uh, had come from. So the, the National Union as, as a uh, sort of a catalyst to move the Armenian uh, community forward uh, failed in, on the sort of national political scene in Washington, and also it, it succumbed to internal uh, Armenian politics. 